Hi everyone, so this continues on from my first video on uh, data tables. You should be able to find some information up here if I can place the card correctly. So what we're going to do is now take this new uh, data table down here and format that using ordinary and conditional formatting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my own particular favorite um, typeface for this. When I'm working with numbers, I prefer courier all the numbers line up much more accurately and I'm just going to make it courier number 11 that keeps it the same size as the one above uh, the headers here I'm going to make that into a dark gray fill uh, on both sides like that a dark gray fill and in the middle I'm going to make the background into a light gray fill okay then I'm just going to make in this top corner the font color the same size as the background color, which is this one here. Makes it disappear, makes it look tidy. I'm going to format these numbers down the side with the percentage format, which is up here on the ribbon, percentage format. And I can use this button here at the side to increase the number of decimal places that that's got. And I can then apply a yellow coloring, any coloring I like to what's going on there. Uh, across here it's going to be a currency format and again I'm going to make that yellow. So that's my top rows dealt with. I'll add one more feature and that is my grid lines to help me see where I am when I'm working with my table. So it's the uh, all borders there and then I'm going to add to that thick outside border which finishes off the appearance of the table well. We now only have our conditional formatting to go. I say only because that's the bit that's quite interesting. Uh, I'm just going to make all of these numbers the same format. Uh, it's going to be money format, currency format. And the color is going to be dependent on the conditional formatting that we're now going to do. So by the conditional formatting part. To do that, I'm going to select one of the cells in the data area, choose conditional formatting, ignore the presets up here and choose new rule. That will allow me to write a formula to get the correct formatting. So click on new rule, the box opens up and in this top field here I go to use a formula to determine which cells to format. Click on that and it allows me to type a formula in there. If that formula is true then it will apply whatever format I choose in this bottom section here. So here we go then. Uh, I'm going to type in for the uh, formula equals. It's an if function. I want it to return a true. And then I'm going to choose negative C23. That's just going to flip the sign round because I'm keeping the numbers up here positive while these are returned negative. Just might take a little bit of time to think through what I've done there. Now I'm going to say is less than or equal to and I want that to be uh, the negative version of whatever this cell here is. And if that is true, I want the system to return a true or if it's not true, I want it to return a false. If it is a true, the format I want is bold and green on top of whatever format's already there. Okay, click on OK and it currently doesn't meet the requirements for being green. Um, so let's not worry, let's move on to the next one. Uh, the next format I'm going to apply, uh, I'm going to use manage rules. It's a quicker way to get to where you are. Let me just check that I have done that right and I haven't. So I'm just going to edit this rule here because I should have put in not the negative sign there. I didn't want the negative sign there. My bad. So now if I click on OK uh, and click on OK, good. I've got my negative 805 there. Always trying to keep up with yourself in this game. So 805, I'm now going to apply a new rule, right? And I'm going to duplicate most of that information. 
And in this case, I'm now going to choose the uh, red rule. What happens when you're way above what you want to pay? So I brought this red rule up. I can double click it. And the red rule um, is going to be negative C23. But in this case, I'm going to change that to a greater than. That less than becomes a greater than sign, however you do that on your keyboard. And in this case, I want to have a negative F5. So negative F5. Uh, once again, when you finish, you can go back and check uh, why I've chosen a negative 5 there with my particular format. So my format now, that I want that one to be red when I can't afford it. Click on OK. Click on OK. Now I've got the intermediate one to do. So in this case, I'm going to have to use not just the if statement, but I want two things to be true. I want it to be true that the figure returned is greater than my green limit, but less than my red limit. So two conditions there that have to be met. And we can do that using Excel's built in and function. So I'm just going to add a new rule formula. And the formula this time is going to be once again, it's an if statement. But in the if statement, I'm going to put a new, another function called the AND function. The AND function takes two parameters separated by a comma. Both of those have to be true for the AND to return a true. So that's what I want. Um, between the upper and lower limits, both of those conditions have to be met. So let me just make sure I write this one correctly. Um, C23, in this case, not the negative version. Uh, because I'm going to flip that round, is, let me see, less than um, this value here. And that's going to be a negative version of that. That's one condition that has to be met. The second one, put a comma in. C23 then has to be, um, have I got that right? Negative greater than now, so it's a greater than, the negative version of, this time it's F5, the, the top limit. So we've got the bottom limit here and the top limit. If those two conditions are met, I close the AND function, then I want the IF function to return a true. If not, I want the IF function to return a false. The format I want when I do that is the yellowish color or the orange color, whatever it happens to be. I still want it to be bold as well. Um, click on OK. Click on OK. I've now got three conditions there. I'm just going to take the, the green one and move it to the top using these little arrows up and down for changing the order of precedence. Uh, there I've got my little traffic lights, if you like. Let's just click on OK. And now I'm going to copy that conditional formatting to all of the cells in the uh, data table. So I click on the Format Painter button and drag that across. And lo and behold, I get exactly the same appearance in that bottom table as in the top one. So we've done something right. Clearly, there's a lot of parts in there, the ifs and the and statements and why have I done those negative signs the way I have? You could get the same results moving those negatives around uh, if you wished. But for my particular example, that was a method I had to use. So if you want to know a bit more about ifs and ands, there's loads of good stuff on um, Microsoft Excel's website. So I hope you found that useful. It's drawn attention to something which isn't often talked about. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.